Hello, everyone, and welcome to the best and worst of Walt Disney World, brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Experts are helping you plan your next Disney vacation. And just so you know, you can book your next Disney vacation from now and through September 26, 2021. And if you need some help, you can head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com and Many of the experts over there, any of the experts, can give you a hand doing that. So I am your host, Ryan O'Clavin, and in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about what makes a Disney park the best. And to help me have this conversation, we have Denny Sunderly. Hey there. Jackie Gailey. Hey, y'all. Craig Williams. No hoy hoy. And that's it. So let's dive right in. We kind of uh, came up with the list. First things that popped into mind when we said, why is it that we feel like Disney parks are the best? And... Um, you know, Denny, uh, you, you came up with something first. You said there's a little bit of something for everyone. And, and then uh, I thought you made some really good points. So talk to us about that. Thank you. So, yeah, so w- our vacations down here to Walt Disney World always had, except for one of them, um, always had three generations. So we had grandma and grandpa, and we had my husband and I, and then we had our two kids. And something that um, just as I'm looking, as I'm comparing Walt Disney World to like a regional theme park, we had seasonal passes, season passes for Six Flags America. Like there were kids rides at Six Flags, but in the kids ride section of the park. And then it was like theme ride, you know, thrill rides and everything else everywhere else. Um, So it was kind of, it was, it was kind of, it was partitioned off. But here at Walt Disney World, there's something for everyone scattered throughout the parks so that um, grandma and grandpa have something that if they don't feel like going on a thrill ride at the time, they have a show that they can sit down and watch with the family. The kids have things that are accessible to them that, uh, that kids can ride and enjoy. And so when you're planning a vacation somewhere, even if you're planning a day trip to you know, a regional theme park, it's important to have something for everyone to be able to enjoy so that the kids aren't sitting around bored to tears when everyone else is off on a thrill ride. No, everyone can go and enjoy some of these things. So that was the first thing that came to mind. Yeah, I, I, uh, it's funny because I had never really thought of that before, of being to uh, other theme parks and having, um, you know, people getting stuck in a kid's area and being like, oh, where's, you know, where, where's Auntie Kelly? And you'd be like, oh, she's in the kid area with the kids. And you're like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, like you were on that duty. So it's, it's nice. It, uh, something I, I guess I never really completely considered. So um, that was pretty cool. For me, uh, I, I thought the, the first thing, that I kind of thought of was cleanliness. And I know there was a weird, like, I, I immediately thought, well, the bathrooms aren't super clean, but they're better. It's better than, than other places I've been, but the park itself, I don't ever actually have like too many active members of being like, Oh, it's dirty. It's not whatever. You know, you always think of like your memories always feel like the Disney commercials. If that, if that makes sense, it's all kind of like shiny and bright. And it's like the upkeep to the park is always, is always more or less there. You know, there, there are sometimes areas that are lacking. Uh, but overall, I think, you know, having that sort of really cleanly factor gives you these, like these really nice, crisp, clean, uh, you know, memories to fall back on. And it's one of those things where if you look back and you're just positive, you know, if everything is picturesque in your head, you want to go back to that picturesque moment, you know, and I, I appreciate that. Also being a germ freak, I really appreciate that too. So I, I've never been like, you know, everybody gets super grossed out when you touch like the monorail railing or anything like that. And in 2020, it's not happening, but like, I, I just think like, oh, I'm glad that they were as clean as they were. And I can't wait for a new generation of like, the most cleanliness ever. Um, So I I look forward to that. But anybody have any other thoughts on cleanliness? I don't know. I feel like it's pretty simple, right? It is. And I love, I, I, I enjoy the thoughtfulness, the intentionality that is behind all of their cleanliness measures, especially now in the world these days in 2020, you, you want to know that everything is being super, um, super uh, well thought out, and then well ex- executed in the park. And I just, I remember the the story about that I've heard, and we've all heard it, where Walt Disney is it actually kind of measured out, thought out. Okay, how long does it take the average person to eat a hot dog? Okay, well, when you're done, whatever length of time that is, let's make sure we put a trash can right there so that the wrapper, or the packaging doesn't go on the ground, it goes in the trash can. So making it easier for the guests 
to help with, you know, the upkeep of the cleanliness of the parks is a great thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, actually, that goes right into one of the other things we had talked about before we started, which was the history of the park and the backstory. You said ba- you were saying backstory and I immediately thought history because but they they do kind of tie together because there is that real history of like what you said, Walt, and kind of the innovation uh, behind building a place like Disney, you know, and, and then uh, what goes into the actual like building of any of their attractions or parks or any experiences that you might have at Disney all kind of comes back to having this backstory, you know, that, that it can be very convoluted sometimes, but it's still cool to know that everything has sort of a rhyme and a reason to it. It's not just there, you know? So I, there's, there's something cool about that because it does give you that uh, extra level of like when you're walking around a park, you know, and you wonder about something, you can like look into it and you're like, oh, that's why it's there. And there's it's fun little Easter eggs and, you know, everything sprinkled throughout, which I which I always really love, too, because it also gives you another perspective upon each visit. You know, it gives you something else to look forward to and mm-hmm. kind of like get into. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And you've got to look up and you've got to look down to see some of those backstories. And shameless plug for connecting with Walt. If you've uh-huh. ever wanted to know more about the history of Walt Disney himself, the family, Roy Disney, the uh, the Disney parks, please listen to Craig and uh, Michael Bowling and everything that they pour into that podcast. It's amazing. Not familiar with that. Yeah. I'll check it out, though. <laughs> is that on, ring a bell, does is it? unplugged? Or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not come to mind. Uh, I find well, that fascinating. I love all of that that hidden detail that's everywhere. Yeah, and Jackie, okay. you had a good one too. You 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 talked about immersion, like the Disney bubble. You know, what you, do you want to yes. talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I, so I just I love it when you walk in and you don't see the outside world. You don't see a tall skyscraper. You don't see any parts of the outside world when you're in the theme parks. And that is one of my favorite things because you are in there. And, you know, even when they were building the Skyliner and we were all kind of worried about the the posts and the, you know, all the cabling that you could see everywhere. And it, it just fits. It just it's OK. It doesn't look out of place. It doesn't look real world because we don't see gondolas just in our cities and our hometowns where we live. I do love the idea that, um, you know, I, I that it can be such a big thing that you are, like you said, you go into a park and you're in that park. You know, you're enveloped mm-hmm. by it. And mm-hmm. um, you can, especially at Disney World compared to like Disneyland, you have your two parks and the in Disney Springs, or Disney Springs, downtown Disney. Um, you know, and I love it there, but it's, a, you know, people say, oh, it's smaller and whatever. It, the it's not really the size thing that's different for me. It's the, it's the, just the, that you can come down a road here. And like you said, once you hit the arches where it's, you know, welcome to Walt Disney world or I know it doesn't say that, but um, it, you can, it's kind of like, it's all Disney, you know, you're not just in the park, like the roadway, the every, everything, like you really do disappear in a, in a, in a way into this kind of into your vacation, I guess, you know? Yeah. And I always look for that. It's funny that you mentioned Disneyland because the first time that I ever really paid attention to that was actually at Toontown at Disneyland. And it was the green mountains that are behind the, the city hall building because I couldn't believe how Disneyland is just right smack in the middle of that city where Mm -hmm. it's a little different at Walt Disney world. Walt Disney world is so spread out. You don't see the city from anywhere really. So, but it's, it's just really cool to me how everything is just a certain height so that you just see the tip of whatever it is from beyond, Yeah, you know, and they even change the shade colors of paint on certain parts of certain buildings so that if someone over there happens to see this part of that building, it looks like it fits there. Just, you know. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot that uh, 
there's a lot of stuff that I, a lot of those eyesight uh, things, you know, and I know they say they've kind of gone away from that uh, line of sight immersion and stuff like that. But, you know, and it, I, I think about like Galaxy's Edge or something. When you're in a place, you're in a place, you know, and there, yeah. there's something great about that. But uh, Craig, you had a, uh, a good one uh, that you spoke about before we got started, and that was nostalgia. Yes, there's, I think nostalgia just goes hand in hand with with Walt Disney World and anything Disney. It's uh, most people are just they grow up with Disney in their life. And uh, you you mentioned it when we were having this discussion before we started that it's even if you grow up on the movies, it's uh, the parks are basically living versions of the movies. So it's like as soon as you walk in, even if you've never been there until you're an adult, it still has that familiar feeling to it. It feels it feels like like your childhood. And if you grow up going as a kid, chances are you've probably already been brainwashed to the point that you're going to continue returning as an adult. And and you don't have a choice once once you're in the club, you're yeah. you're stuck in the club. So yeah, Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah, yeah. it just. It, it, it has this this ingrained nostalgia that's built in, but that's the nice part too for people is that with the nostalgia, it's it also there's there's going to be the things that you love at Walt Disney World for the most part that just never change or don't change for a very long time. So you know that every time you come back to Walt Disney World, Peter Pan's flight's still going to be exactly where it is and and all those classic attractions that you love are going to still be there maybe they get updated from time to time and maybe in some cases like great movie ride going to runaway railway they get removed completely and and changed up but there's still that there's still that right amount of nostalgia that can be left in there Disney doesn't change a lot of the res- the restaurant menus very often, so chances are, even if you don't come it, more than you know every other year, there will still be at least one or two dishes that you remember from the last time that you were here, and it'll instantly take you right back to to that last trip or an earlier trip. So uh, Disney is just built on on nostalgia, and while Disney World, you know, it's it's about to turn fifty. And maybe you're watching this when it's already fifty. Uh, it we can't say anymore that well, it's it's not that old. It doesn't it doesn't have that same time that Disneyland had uh, to build up the nostalgia. But it absolutely absolutely does at this point. It's well, it's an yeah. old old girl. Uh, yeah. uh, I think I think about um, you know just uh, the the like you said the things that'll be there whether it's attractions or not. But think about um, what it's like to walk down Main Street. You know um, whether you've whether it's your first visit or you've been there a hundred times. It's kind of always going to have you know that type of music. You know you're going to hear. You know you know you're going to have that cookie smell coming from the bakery and like you've never been there before that that smell is still going to bring you back to like you know a childlike wonder or sense or whatever let's just you know cookies. you know the castle is going to be blue and gray every time you walk in <laughs> oh boy too soon craig <laughs> uh, yeah well there yeah, no but also rhino it, it's that it's leaving the park too when you're here on vacation and you know it's your last you know, your last visit to Magic Kingdom for that for that period of time, if you've been here for a week or, or less, and you kind of turn and you look at the castle one last time and you and you want to try to remember this moment, like and you leave with a tear in your eye. Yeah. <laughs> like yes. it's that nostalgia that also that like you were saying, that'll bring you back next time because you can't wait until the next time that you get to leave, you know, everything behind, like what you were saying, Jackie. Everything gets left behind and you get to step into that that magical place and and share it. You know, either you're with you're you're on your own or get to share it with the people that you're with. And it's um there's just nostalgia everywhere around Walt Disney World. Yeah. 
Well, there you have it. Those are some of the things that we think uh, that uh, that make up uh, that are the reason why a Disney park is the best. And obviously, everybody has different reasons. So we'd love to hear yours. So if you're watching this, please leave some comments in the YouTube section. Um, and I think that'll do it for this episode. Thank you, everyone, for having this discussion. Thank you, everyone out there, for watching and listening. And remember, again, you can book your Disney vacation through September 26, 2021. So if you want some help and you don't want to deal with that headache yourself, you can head over to Dreams Unlimited Travel and let some of those agents over there get you started on your next trip. Thank you, uh, everyone, again. And we'll see you next time with another episode of The Best and Worst of Walt Disney World. Bye, everyone. <laughs>